seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Are you listening? Ricky J. Sparks. What is going on, my fellow YouTubers? This is Ricky J, baby, from Ricky J Sports. And I gotta say, welcome to the UFC gym. And better yet, welcome to another Fight Camp video, baby. And we are looking at denials in the clinch, man. Denials in the clinch. And this may be basic to some or may be helpful to others, man. But I thought I would post this because a lot of people don't know about some of these clinch denials. And I think it's gonna help you. It has definitely helped me. Now, for all you guys that don't know, the bulk of my time playing this game, my Achilles heel, my kryptonite, my weakness, whatever you want to call it, was the clinch. If you look at my most of my videos, every time my opponent would engage in the clinch, I would always cry the blues and say, you know what, why are you slow dancing with me? And I would always have tough times. But I've been getting better, man, using the strategies that I've developed, and I want to share it with you guys right now. As we're using the AKA team with Kane Velasquez and Daniel Cormier, I'm so pumped up for the fights, but that's for another video. So let's pretend... So I'm using both guys right here, trying to do uh, show you guys these examples with um, two controllers and one person. So bear with me if I make a mistake. So let's just say for argument's sake, or for example's sake, we are using Cain Velasquez. The first thing I think about when I get engaged in the clinch is I look at my opponent's arms. Yeah, you gotta know the difference between your left and your right. And in this situation, I'm looking to see which arm is going to move on Cormier's side, because we are using Cain Velasquez. And most guys will get into the tie man so you can anticipate the tie because if your opponent's left arm is on the back of your neck his right arm is going to be the one that's going to initiate the tie so if his right arm is moving you're going to push r2 for the ps4 which i use if you're using xbox it's rt and right analog to the right so as he does does that i'm pushing r2 and right analog to the right see that and i'm just flicking it not holding it just flicking it now that is a great denial because then you can get the grappling advantage and do your own thing, go for a takedown or go for the tie clinch yourself. Now some guys may get into over under and they're, look at Cormier, what arm is he moving? Say it to the screen people, he is moving that left arm so I'm going to push R2 and right analog to the left. You know what I'm saying? See that? He's going like there, bam. And then you can deny it and then once the stamina goes down you can do some crazy damage. Now that is all good and great. But let's just say Cormier decides to go for a takedown. Now for single leg, double leg as you see on the screen, and leg grab, you simply push R2 and right analog down. So let's see here. So Cormier, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. So I just simply push R2 and right analog down. And that's for pretty much, that's for all of the takedowns in that single collar situation. Now, mind you, the leg grab is really hard to deny because it's really fast. So, look at the double leg right here. Again, I flick it down and then I sprawl. What a beautiful sprawl that is. And then I can gain the advantage in the fight. Now, let's just check out the leg grab. So, the leg grab comes quick. But if you can deny it right away, if you could see it quick. Now, uh, he's, just grabbing that, he's just grabbing that leg and then you're pushing it down. But every time somebody engages in a takedown, I just simply push... R2 and right analog down and that's single collar. Now quickly I'm not going to get into it too much but just for example's sake let's say we are using now Daniel Cormier and our opponent is Cain Velasquez okay so he is trying to get into tie and right away think about it what arm is going to get into tie it's that right arm so it's the opposite arm so the arm that he has the, the hand on the back of the neck is not the arm that he's going to use to get into tie. It's the, the other arm. So you know right away which way am I going. I'm not going R2 and right down to the left. I am going to R2 and right down to the right. Why? Because Cain Velasquez is moving his right hand. See that? He's moving his right hand and then I'm pushing R2 and right down to the right. If Cain decides to go the other way, it's R2 and right analog to the left. Now that single collar, let's get in to some tie action. So we are now in tie, okay? We are Daniel Cormier, we are in tie, and your opponent is struggling to get out. Now typically, most guys, when they get into tie, they will try to unload on you, which is fine. But what I like to do is when I get into tie, I like to wait and see what my opponent's going to do. So when I get into tie, most guys will try to break free by pushing up. And what are you gonna do to deny that? You're gonna push R2 and right analog up. Keep on doing that and then after you do that, 
man, you can strike and really KO your opponent. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm pretty sure you've seen it. I'm pretty sure you've been on the receiving end or been, you know, giving, dishing out the pain, man. But if they do that, if they push up, you know, see how, let's see right here. So if they push up, I'm pushing R2 and right analog up. Now, if they try to go to single collar, which the really good guys will, they won't try to break free because they know that you're anticipating that. So if you see that, if he goes to single collar, look at that arm that's tucked into the chest of Daniel Cormier. Do you see that? It's tucked right in the middle, that left arm. So I'm gonna just push R2 and right analog to the left. If he goes to the right side, it's R2 and right analog to the right. See that? So you're looking at, typically, you're just looking at your opponent and seeing what arms are moving. Whichever arm is moving is the way you're gonna go. You're not gonna go for what you see on the screen, okay? So please remember that. Now let's get into some double under action. So we are in double under. And your opponent is trying to <laughs> get out of this situation. Look how strong Cormier is though, eh? I can't even move him out. But if he is trying to get out, you just look at his arms again. I know I'm repeating myself, but I want you guys to remember this strategy. See how he's t trying to tuck it under to gain that double on to gain that over under. So if he does that, then it's R2 and right analog to the right. See that? If he dips that left arm in, it's R2 and right analog to the left. So this is really good because then you can go for a nice little throw, nice little takedown that way. So <laughs> if he tries to break free though, the break free is, it's actually, I'm looking at it right now. So if he tries to break free, his arm, his left arm just goes in there and you can just deny, look at that. You can just deny by going to the left. So don't worry if they try to break free, you could even go up as well. So that's pretty amazing. See, I learned something. The break free and the getting the, um, the over under on the left, I would just always go to the left. Don't worry about going up. You could go up, but if he goes over under to the left and I go up, oh, you can deny it that way too. Unbelievable stuff. But just look for the arm. That's pretty interesting. That is pretty interesting. Now let's flip the script, people, and let's say our opponent has double under on us. If they want to get into tie right here, notice how he's moving his right arm. So simply R2 and right analog to the right. See that? Now, if they want to get into back, they dip. See how he's dipping his left shoulder down? So it's R2 and right analog to the left. Okay, you see that? See that action? Now, when it comes to the takedowns, if my opponent wants to establish a body lock on me, single leg, double leg, to deny all that, it's R2 and right analog down. Don't mistake the body lock for R2 and right analog up. It's always down. So if he tries to give me a body lock, it's R2 and right analog down. See that? If he tries to give me single leg, R2 and right analog down. Before we end it over under, I want to get into over under just real quick. So say we establish over under and our opponent is kind of trying to get into position. This is the only position where it's the opposite. And I know I hate to end off the video this way, but this is how over under is. But the good news is you rarely get into over under. But if your opponent does get into over under where each person has an armpit that they can um, that they can kind of shove their arm into, it's the opposite. So look at Kane. Kane is moving that left arm, but it's actually not R2 and right analog to the left. It's R2 and right analog to the right to deny that. If he wants to go double under this side, it's R2 and right analog to the left. That's the only time where it's actually the opposite. But like I said, the good news is you won't be an over under in most of your fights, man. So the name of the game is always look at your opponent, understand your left from your right, and always remember that in the takedown realm, it's R2 and down. All right, people, so hopefully this video has helped you guys out. Let's talk about some clinch action. Let me know your strategies. Let's all share so we can all get better. In my opinion now, I'm confident in the clinch and I'm ready to take on anybody. Remember, I don't know if you guys saw my video where I was facing the former number one guy on L1 Chica 
and he usually gets me in the clinch. I want to face him now, man. I really want to face him now just to see how much my clinch game has improved because he's really good in the clinch. Even though some of you may call him cheesy, he's good in the clinch. So I'm ready to take on some good clinch guys just to test my game out. Anyhow, people, this is Ricky J, baby, from Ricky J Sports. Thanks for watching, and you are awesome.